On the previous video, we tackled the theories of the moon. Did you know that the moon has an atmosphere? That there are also quakes on the moon? Join me in exploring the vast properties of the moon. Number 1. The Temperature of the Moon Temperatures of the moon are extreme, from boiling hot to freezing cold, depending on where the sun lands its side. When sunlight hits the moon's surface, the temperature can reach 253 degrees Fahrenheit, much hotter than the boiling water. The other side of the moon, which the sun did not set, has a temperature of negative 243 Fahrenheit. The moon is an iron-rich core, with a temperature of probably about 2420 to 2600 degree Fahrenheit. The core hits an inner layer molten of mantle, but it's not hot enough to warm the surface of the moon. Number 2. The Atmosphere of the Moon We were told that the moon has no atmosphere, but it actually has and it's called exosphere. Exosphere is mostly made up of helium, neon, argon, sodium, and potassium, which are not found in the atmosphere of the Earth, Mars, nor Venus. The helium and neon was given by the solar wind, and argon comes from radioactive decay of potassium from the moon's interior. During the lunar night, the moon's exosphere mostly falls to the ground. When sunlight returns, the solar wind kicks up new particles to replenish the exosphere. Number 3. Maps of the Moon Most of us know that the first man to make proper maps of the moon was Galileo. Turns out to be that he wasn't. Yes, he wasn't the first, but he was among the first. The first man to draw the maps of the moon was actually Thomas Harriot several months before Galileo. Harriot acquired his first telescope that has been invented in Netherlands in 1608. He tuned it to the moon, becoming the first astronomer to draw a ceramical object after viewing it through the telescope. From 1610 to 1613, he produces more maps and showed increasing level of detail. By 1613, he had created two maps of the whole moon. However, he did not publish his drawings. At the time, Galileo wasn't able to buy a telescope, so he figured the optics and built his own that could magnify the objects 20 times. And with this telescope, he began his careful study of the moon's surface. Number 4. Sea of Tranquility The Sea of Tranquility is a dark spot located in the northern hemisphere of the moon. Even though an area is called Sea of Tranquility, there are no seas on the moon. The misconception came from Galileo, one of the first person to study night sky using a telescope. He believed that this particular region of the moon was a tranquil. Even after this was disapproved, the name simply stuck. Number 5. Moonquakes Lunar astronauts use seismographs on their visits to the moon. Found that the small moonquakes occurred several kilometers beneath the surface, causing raptures and cracks. Scientists think that the moon has a molten core just like Earth. Moonquakes are much more weaker than the largest earthquakes. However, they can last up to an hour due to lack of water to dampen seismic vibrations. Like on Earth, we measure the quakes via magnitude. Moonquake can be identified by four categories. Number one, deep moonquakes. 700 kilometers below the surface, probably tidal in origin. Number two, meteorite impact vibrations. Number three, thermal moonquakes caused by the expansion of frigid crust when first illuminated by the morning sun after two weeks of deep freeze lunar night. Number 4. Shallow moonquakes 20 or 30 kilometers below the surface. The first three kinds tends to be mild. However, shallow moonquakes can register up to 5.5. On Earth, 4.5 magnitude can cause damage to buildings and other structures. According to Armstrong, shallow moonquakes lasted more than 10 minutes and the moon was ringing like a bell. 
number six, craters. The moon's heavily cratered surface is the result of intense pummeling by space rocks between 4.1 billion and 3.8 billion years ago. Since moon has a weak exosphere, meteoric impact or impact by asteroids collide on its surface. Because of the moon's lack of water and atmosphere, or tectonic plates, there is a little erosion. And craters are found that exceed 2 billion years in age. The scars of this war seen as craters have not eroded much. Number 7. Moon Dust Especially around sunrise and sunset on the moon, dust tends to hover above the surface. It might have something to do with the particles being electrically charged or it might be some other phenomenon at work. The effect was noticed by some of the Apollo astronauts and also started in detail during LADY mission. Moon dust is part of the moon's exosphere. It floats 60 miles above the moon's surfaces. Moon dust according to astronauts are like snow when you felt it. John Young, Apollo 16 astronaut even tasted the moon dust. The smell was like spent gunpowder according to Cernan. So how do they sniff it? Moon dust are clingy. It will stick to any equipment it touches. Once the helmet and gloves are off, astronaut can smell the moon dust. Astronaut says it smells like gunpowder, but surely there are no guns there. ISS astronaut Don Petit offers one possibility. Picture yourself in a desert earth, he says. What do you smell? Nothing. Until it rains. The air is suddenly filled with sweet, peaty odors. Water leveraging from the ground carries molecules to your nose that have been trapped in dry soil for months. Maybe something similar happens to the moon. The moon is like a 4 billion year old desert, he says. It's incredibly dry. When moon dust comes in contact with moist air in lunar module, you get the desert rain effect and some lovely odors. Of course, astronaut brought back sample of moon dust. However, the effect of moon dust is not the same as they were on the moon. The smell was not like gunpowder. The containers that are holding this moon dust are cut open due to the jagged edge of the dust, allowing oxygen and water vapor to sneak in during the three-day trip back to Earth. Number 8. Moon Rocks Apollo 12 got a sample container filled with lunar soil. Moon rocks fall into two main categories, those found in the lunar highlands Terrae and those in the Maria. Rocks from the moon are similar to three kinds of igneous rocks that are here on Earth. Anorthosites, Brachius, and Basil. It is about 3.2 billion years in the dark low basins and 4.6 billion years rocks collected from Terrae. Apollo 17 picked up a very significant rock composed of many fragments, size, and shapes. President Nixon ordered the distribution of fragments of the rock to 135 foreign heads of the state and 50 U.S. states in 1970, 180 of which are now unaccounted for. Since moon rocks are rare, it is subject for forgery and theft. Moon rocks cost 50800 per gram based on how much it cost U.S. government to retrieve the samples between 1969 and 1972. Number 9. Moon's Age It is believed that the moon could possibly be older than Earth and Sun. Scientists have dated some moon rock as billions of years old. Some have been dated back as far as 4.5 billion years. Harvard's respected astronomy journal Sky and Telescope reported that a lunar conference in 1973 dated a lunar rock as 5.3 billion years old, which would make it almost a billion years older than our planet. Earth was 4.54 billion years old. Number 10. Operation Mundling in the early 19th century, Sir John Herschel in England saw unidentified lights on the moon during an eclipse and noted that some of the lights appeared to be moving above the moon. Other astronomers of the period also reported seeing geometrical pattern of light that resembled city streets. In the mid-1960s, NASA established operation to investigate many strange flashes of the light over the moon. 
the Space Association had received reports of many extraordinary lunar events. In 1959, a dark object had been observed hovering over the moon for two hours. On July 29, John O'Neill observed a 19-kilometer long bridge on the moon. One month later, famous British astronomer Dr. H. Wilkins verified the sighting. In the 12 months to September 1966, Operation Moonblink had detected 28 unusual lunar events. In 1968, an obelisk-shaped object was discovered. This became known as the Shard. The object rose nearly two and a half kilometers above the Urquhart area of the moon's surface which rises more than 8 kilometers from the sinus medi region. No known natural process can explain the structure.